Okay, welcome back for chemistry. Let's do this. Um, let's start off. Can you hear me? Cameras on, please. Your usual continuing education. Go to your week two folder, Wednesday. And let's do our day six continuing education. Let me know if you found it. Let me know if you're having problems. I do have a meeting at 12, so I'll try to end it 10 minutes early, okay? End the class 10 minutes early. So we'll get to organic and inorganic chemistry as much as we could. Waiting on Lawrence. No one's working. He's working slow today. It's not, he's really just trying, trying his best to be here. But I do appreciate that he's trying. Robert, were you absent last time? I see continuing education day five. You don't have anything. Omar, you don't have anything on continuing education day five. Kayla, you don't have anything on continuing education day five. So.
I sent you quick reminders on day five. Lawrence, are you having a hard time with a computer? Yeah, okay. It's not showing on my end yet. You did day five, but we're on day six today. So I'm waiting on day six. Some of you, I sent an alert on day five. So Miss Jaylene can get this day five homework as well. But we're currently doing day six. Yeah, because your day five already has a score. A while ago, it didn't. But day six, still nothing. I can see Omar working on day five right now. He's done with day six. I can see Kayla working on day five right now. She's done with day six. Okay, let's start. So what was that about? What was that, um, Ramey? What was that continuing education about? Uh, a diabetic medication that was causing the side effect was genital infection. Genital infection, very good. What is the suffix for this drug? Tony, what is this drug? The Faison, the Faison drug? flows in remember it's flows in okay flows in so the answer to the question is the genital infection okay let's start i won't dwell in that since i'm gonna cut the um chemistry short due to my meeting at 12. so organic and inorganic chemistry all of this are in the audio lectures as well okay and in your lecture packet the lecture packet is a summary the the audio lecture matches with the lecture packet. This PowerPoint slide is also a summary. You have to remember that your chemistry, this chemistry is fundamentals of chemistry, even more basic than general chemistry. So when I was in pharmacy school, we had to study about an average of five chemistry. We do have the general chemistry, the organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, we do have biochemistry, we do have plant chemistry, we do have pharmacognosy. So when I started teaching at the state college, um, they were asking me to teach organic chemistry. I said, no, and I'm gonna quit my job if I have to teach organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is one of the toughest chemistries, I think, okay, that I ever took, okay, in my pharmacy school. Biochemistry is also tough, really tough, okay? But what's fun about organic chemistry is the hexagons, okay? Have you seen the hexagons? When you see chemical structures, you always see those six-sided polygon, and sometimes they have lines in between or circle at the middle. That's what you call a benzene ring. Each corner and each line of that hexagon, let me draw it, is actually um, a carbon atom, okay? So let's see, let me annotate. When you go check out drugs, any drug, you will see different hexagons put together. So right here, you'll see this, okay? Sometimes it's represented by a, a circle at the middle or 
double lines, okay? This is what you call a benzene ring, okay? Each corner of this or each line represents a carbon atom. Follow? In chemicals, drugs are actually sometimes, or most of the time, a combination of all this. These are double bonds when we see that, okay? And then sometimes it will even have extra stuff like an oxygen on the side or a Cl on the side or a sulfur on the side, okay? So you're familiar? I'm not asking you specific ones. Chemists, pharmacists will have to remember and picture ones, say for example, aspirin. This should be what's going on in your head. Aspirin configuration looks like this, okay? Organic versus inorganic chemistry. Organic chemistry, you will see a lot of this. Why? When you say organic chemistry, if we may simplify it as this, organic chemistry is the study of carbon, carbon bonds, okay? Carbon atoms. In organic chemistry, on the other hand, is what? The study of things other than carbon. So this will include your metals, non-metals. Can you follow? Yeah, that's the difference. So when you see chemical structures like that with hexagons, benzene rings, then that's organic chemistry. That's why it's so tough. But our drugs, have chemical composition and chemical structure, okay? But like what I said, this is just fundamentals of chemistry. So we're gonna make it as simple as we can. Now you understand why I said, I don't wanna teach this like as a, as a subject, as a class, a standalone class, okay? Because you have to do all of these things. As pharmacy technicians, we don't have a specific organic chemistry class or inorganic chemistry class. We lumped it all in the fundamentals of chemistry. And we will have to really crunch it as to what's gonna be useful for you guys, okay? So we're gonna talk about the um, what goes in the IV bag, okay? The elements, okay? Or the electrolytes that go in the IV bag, okay? To simplify again, organic is a study of compounds that contain carbon atoms. That's when the benzene ring, the hexagons come into play. Inorganic is study of like the rest of it, not including carbon. So that's where your um, metals, minerals will come into play, the zinc, et cetera, et cetera. Organic chemistry, okay. There are four types of organic molecules found in our body. Our body is organic, okay. When you hear organic, when you're talking about food, What's the first thing that comes to mind, Robert? If we're talking about food, organic. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking of a hamburger, but I don't know if that's right. Okay, it can be, okay. But just what do you think when, you, when you're at the grocery and it says organic versus something that doesn't say organic, say fruits. Um, what is your understanding of organic? um that there's no like chemicals in it or correct it's more expensive it, yes correct it's about 20 to 40 percent more expensive they didn't use chemicals in it how did this start why did they call it organic okay the healthier stuff right because the pesticides and the chemicals used to spray has a lot of those carbon atoms that's how it started Okay, so being organic, that means it's planted in soil without the use of chemicals and preservatives once it gets to the store. That's why it's a little bit more expensive because it goes bad fast. There's no preservative, okay? So they have to recoup that. I always say, well, I choose organic, why? Why are you willing to pay that extra price of 25% or more to be healthier because getting sick may be costly in the long run. So it's like an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Okay, so our body is composed of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Okay, 
I want you to think of this in terms of food. When we're studying carbohydrates, we think about, I remember when I was in elementary, we talked about nutrition, okay? So we have what the three groups of food. Let me annotate. And my teacher simplified it. I like the way she simplified it. I remember how she did it. So we have, she said, what we call the go foods, the grow foods, and the glow foods. <laughs> Sounds so elementary, right? <laughs> go, grow, and glow, okay? So when she was explaining it, I think I was in third grade. When she was explaining it, what are go foods? What do you think this does? This are the food that make you go, meaning gives you energy. Can you follow? This are the food that gives you energy. Of this four, what do you think is a go food in there that gives your body energy? Brandon? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, correct. So your go food, Abbreviation for carbohydrates is CHO. That's what I learned in organic chemistry because it's a combination of car carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's why CHO, carbohydrates. That's how pharmacists and chemists would write carbohydrates. Okay, carbohydrates would make you go, gives you energy. Okay, so examples of carbohydrates, examples of food that are rich in carbohydrates, okay? This is what I always say. Um, anything white usually falls under carbohydrates. Yeah? Okay. And I joke about this. If you guys don't know, I'm married to a white guy, so I joke about this too, okay? Um, I say anything white is bad. Yeah, I read it somewhere. Anything white is bad. <laughs> White rice, white bread. <laughs> so carbohydrates, go food gives you energy. White sugar, okay? So now give me an example of food that falls under the go or carbohydrates. Robert. Did we lose that theory? Oh, there she is. Can you ask the question again, please? Can you give me an example of food that fall under carbohydrates or your go foods? Would that, wait, wouldn't that be like bread? Yes, I just got examples. Like usually anything white falls under go. Okay, so your bread. Okay, Tony, what else? What do Asians and Hispanics like to eat our staple? Rice. Rice. White rice. Okay, what else? Jess, examples of carbohydrates. Um, potatoes. Potatoes, your root crops. Anything that's what? Buried under the ground. Potatoes, sweet potatoes. Um, what else? What else? Anything that's start rich, starch rich. Okay, so if you're very concerned about your diet and nutrition, what's that keto thing going on? That is what? Less carbs, right? They eat more protein than carbs, okay? When you break down carbohydrates, what do you get? You should have heard this in the audio lecture. When you break down carbohydrates, what do you get? Omar, do you know? When you break down, because carbohydrate is a compound. Okay, so sugar. it's a, very good. It's a chain of sugars. So it will be sugar connected to another sugar, connected to another sugar. So if I ask you, what is the simplest form of carbohydrate? It will be sugar. Okay, let's check now the different types of sugar. What do you call the sugar in the blood? I talked about this if you were in my class. Aziri, what do you call the sugar in the blood? Terminologies. What do you call the sugar in the blood? Um, glucose. glucose. Very good. 
Glucose. What do you call, what do you think you call the sugar in fruits? Do you know, Kevin, the sugar in fruits? Kevin, if you need help, I got you. See? Is it fructose? Very good. It's called fructose. Okay. And there are so many different types of sugar. Okay, but you have to remember that the simplest form of carbohydrates is sugar. You follow? Yes. Now let's jump to the grow foods. This help you grow. Okay, this help you grow. That's why it's called grow foods. Okay, and what do you think since carbohydrates is a go of this four? Nicole, which one do you think are grow foods? Think about keto diet. Protein. Protein. Okay. Here comes your protein. Protein rich food. Food. Okay. Protein rich food. So keto started. Okay. Protein rich, less carbs to no carbs. Why? What do these people believe? Why? Should why did they change their diet to high protein, less carbs? Brandon, why do you think? What was the reason behind? So could you repeat the question again? Why do you think the keto diet? They said the keto diet is more protein, right? Less carbs. Why do you think people choose the keto diet and believe that? we should have protein-rich versus carbo-rich diet. Um, well, I used to be on a keto diet and it's to- Very good, so I ask you a perfect question. Yeah, it's supposed to burn your fat faster and use your fats for energy instead of the carbohydrates in your body. Very good, because it's for faster metabolism. And protein for the grow, it also includes the fats. Okay, it also includes the fats, the fats and the protein. That's why the people under the keto diet, what, eat a lot of meat. Yes, Brandon, you want to add something? Um, wouldn't lipids be considered as gold as well because they store energy? Very good. Okay, so the lipids may, did you say go or grow? Go. Okay, so the lipids can fall under grow. Okay, lipids and fat under grow. Okay, though the goal really, it's only carbohydrates, okay? Because when you break down a goal, a carbohydrate it has to be simple sugar, okay? When you break down lipids, you don't get simple sugar, okay? So lipids will fall under the grow. That's why if you're on a keto diet, you're allowed to eat fat, fatty food, meat, okay? So that's, that's how it started. And Brandon is correct. It increases metabolism, fuel. Grow is more fuel, okay? So they both, they both give energy. However, the grow is more fuel and metabolism, okay? Under the grow also are amino acids, okay? So you wanna write on your grow AA, amino acids. Why am I saying this? If carbohydrates, when broken down, is sugar, pro, um, amino acids, when broken down, are proteins. Can you follow? So it's a chain of proteins. Can you follow? In your lecture packet, how many amino acids are there? Did you say, Brandon, what did you say? Is it 20? Check again. There's essential and non-essential, and there's the total amino acid. So tell me that.
chemistry lecture packet. It says amino acids, AA. There are this many amino acids, but there's only this many essential. 547. What was the number, Jess? 547. There's 547 amino acids available. How many of that is essential? Twenty. Twenty are essential. Okay, twenty are essential. In this twenty, okay, if you are working out into fitness so much, these are the ones that you want in your protein drink, in your protein shake. Why? When you say essential, your body needs it, but your body doesn't produce it. Brandon, am I making sense now? Okay, so those of you who are into this, after I do this lecture, I have students come and bring all of their supplements to me and review it, okay? It's a good thing to review your supplements or your pre-workout or your post-workout, why? Okay, a lot of you are spending more than you should. Duplications, a lot of duplications, yeah? You already got it on your whey protein, you still have it on a tablet or a capsule form and you still have it. I always like every, every quarter or so, I line up all of my supplements and see the ingredients, which ones are duplication. And then I'll realize, oh my gosh, this is exactly the same as this one, toss. Okay, I don't have to buy this. So it's worth reviewing the ingredients of your pre and your post-workout supplements together with your multivitamins. You follow? Okay, very important too. Like what I said, I always talk about real life. Okay, how do you say that, IRL? I'm learning from you guys. IRL, in real life, this are application because a lot of you I know are into health stuff. You go to the gym and then you just take whatever pre-workout is popular. I'm not like that. I check the ingredients, okay? And this is how you can become smart consumers too. So compare the ingredients of the supplements you're taking, your pre-workout stuff. I'll bet you a lot of them are duplication, okay? A lot of them are duplication. So going back, now, let's tie the last piece of the puzzle, which is the glow food. My teacher in elementary school, I remember, she said it's called glow because these are groups of food that make your skin glow, your hair nice, your nails beautiful and strong. So what you, do you think fall under the glow food, Raimi? Nucleic acids. It's actually not in the four. That's a clue. It's not in the four. What do you what think? Part? What? It's not in the four bullets. It's not in the four bullets. What do you think? What do you take? Think about your supplements. What do you think for healthier skin, hair, and nails? Vitamin B complex. There you go. Vitamin E is specific to hair, nails, skin. Vitamin E. So the glow food fall under vitamin. I mean, vitamins and minerals fall under the glow food. Okay. Vitamins and minerals. You see, how can I make it more elementary than that? I remember my third grade teacher talking about this because it makes sense in chemistry and nutrition, okay? The glow food, that includes your vitamins and minerals, okay? Now, you'll have vitamins A to zinc. Remember that commercial? Vitamins A to zinc, but really the zinc is not a vitamin. It falls under minerals. So... My last question would be, why do you think we need to take vitamins and minerals supplementation? Why do you think we need vitamins and minerals? Why do we take these supplements with vitamins and minerals? Why do we have to? Yes, Robert. Uh, I'm just making a guess, but I think it's because like some of the minerals like don't naturally like replenish on their own. Okay, vitamins and minerals are not produced by our body, okay? It's like there are elements, okay, ions, 
that are produced by our body, like sodium, right? But vitamins are not produced by our body. Okay, real quick, maybe in the next class, research your vitamins because I want you to know what they're called. Like vitamin A is called what? Vitamin B, there's one to 12. Okay, you should know what they're called. I actually learned that this is one of the questions in the PTC. So hint, hint, wink, wink. B1, I'll give you an example. B1, thiamine. B2, riboflavin. Okay. B3, B4, B5, B6, B9, B12. Okay. Then you have your vitamin E. What does vitamin E do? It's for hair, nails, skin. Okay. What does vitamin K do? Tony, do you remember my vitamin K warning? Vitamin K. Uh, you're warning about potassium? Um, Who remembers my vitamin K warning? When you're taking vitamin K, you should not take. And your broccoli, spinach are rich in vitamin K. Warfarin. Warfarin and coumadin. Okay. Always a question on the board exam. Warfarin and Coumadin, okay, which one is brand, which one's generic? Can somebody say it? Warfarin is the generic human is brand. Is right. that correct, Kevin? Warfarin, he said, is the generic, Coumadin is the brand. Okay, this is what you call blood thinner. So what does it do? It thins out the blood, right? And what is vitamin K? Vitamin K is a clotting factor. So if the doctor prescribed you to make your blood thinner and then you're gonna take vitamin K as a supplement or broccoli, spinach, all those leafy greens that are rich in vitamin K, it will interfere with your warfarin or coumadin. Can you follow? Okay, here's another example. When you go to a doctor's office and then the doctor schedules you for surgery, Okay, the doctor will say, will ask you, are you on aspirin, warfarin, or coumadin? You hear? Rin, rin, rin. These are your blood thinners. Before surgery, you have to stop taking your aspirin seven days before surgery. Why is that? Okay, when they cut you open, if it's a blood thinner, what do you think will happen? You will You'll bleed. bleed. You will bleed. Okay, that's why they say that the natural clotting factor should kick in. Okay, vitamin K now, let's go back. So you have this drug because you need it to thin out your blood. And then you're going to take a lot of broccoli, a lot of um, spinach that will defeat the purpose of your drug. You follow? But there's one good thing that vitamin K can do to you, IRL, in real life. Okay, what is that? Who likes smoothies and shakes? Hands up. Okay, share this to your family and friends, okay? It's very common for people, especially here in Las Vegas, those who move from out of state, who's got nose bleeding problems. Who's got nose bleeding problems? Hands up. No? Good job, okay? But there are a lot. This is how I solve that problem for many of my friends, okay? In your smoothie, in your shake, when you make it, Toss all that broccoli that you don't like or that spinach that you don't like. And then observe. Keep doing that, okay? You won't have the bleeding problems anymore. Why do you think so, Brandon? Because I said vitamin K is responsible for the clotting factor and spinach and broccoli are rich in vitamin K. How is that related? No, you're still ingesting the spinach and broccoli, the vitamin K. Very good. Because it seems like you have problems with your blood being thin. That's why you have all of this bleeding problem. But if you start taking a vitamin K that will help clot it or delay that kind of fluidity, make it a little bit thicker, if I can explain it that way, make your blood a little bit thicker so you don't bleed. That's what the broccoli and the spinach does. A lot of my friends who have bleeding problems, they tossed a lot of broccoli in their shake and a lot of spinach, and they said that it worked. 
work like a charm. Okay, so if you're from out of state, you move here and then you have bleeding problems. That's one thing that you can do natural. I'm kind of the ironic pharmacist. I would go the natural way first before the drug way first. Any questions? I'm one minute late for my uh, meeting, but it's been a great class. Tomorrow, what's your schedule tomorrow? Jess, can you remind everyone where to be tomorrow? On campus. What time? Nine. Nine, okay. Robert, can you remind everyone what time you're gonna be in your Zoom on Friday? Nine. Nine as well, okay. Have your drug words presentation ready on Friday. It's going to be a three hour class, okay. Bye guys.